You just sharpen it. There's nothing really special about taxidermy tools. Most people, when they look at their mount, it flashes back a whole bunch of memories. What happened on that hunt, um, the funny things, the sad things. You're trying to preserve that memory. Yes, photos are good, but when you have something that sits in your house and you can look at it and remember the stories and what it took. It's, I, I think it's definitely maybe a little bit more art um, because there is a lot to it when you guys see a skin and then we make it into this. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, it's not just a cookie cutter, put it over the thing and tuck a few things in. Every taxidermist, I feel, um, yes, we're doing this for an occupation, but we're also, we also do it because we, I, th I feel most of us love um, everything about it. It's an art, it's not perfect. It'll never be perfect. Um, animals aren't even perfect. I started doing taxi around my garage and uh, it kind of just built and built and built. I did finish my degree in wildlife ecology and conservation thinking I was gonna be a biologist. I did work for Nevada Department of uh, Wildlife and USGS in a few different places along the way getting my degree and then afterwards I'm like, I either have to start applying for jobs or continue doing this taxidermy thing. And uh, I kept telling myself, I love what I do every day because it's different. Um, I enjoy taxidermy. You're always working on different things, meeting different people. I give each animal my full attention and I cut them in seven places because there's seven vertebrae in any animal. So I'll cut seven, I'll cut seven discs out of that neck and take that head and turn it this way or that way and just tweak it to where every mouth that comes out of here is different from the last. A lot of people don't do that. I got into it is because of my love for the animals, believe it or not. You know, they're gonna get killed regardless. They need to get they need to get thinned out you know so they don't overpopulate and don't overgraze but um so it's a necessity for hunting and if you use most of the animal then that's the best thing you can do right you need to make it worthy of the kill the marine psychiatrist showed up here one day and he's like well that's why you can't get any work done i said why is that he goes because it's art and if your mind isn't set in the right place to do art, you're never going to be able to get it done. This is like something that I can really put a lot of pride into. And so we found this place uh, out here and after a while, we had all this property and we just decided we wanted to do something with it that was meaningful. And we had read this book called The Pig Who Sang to the Moon that was about what farm animals' lives would be like if they weren't domesticated, how they lived in the wild. and and we had all this land and we figured that we could make protected areas uh, where we could give them as close to their natural life as we could.
think taxidermy in and of itself, I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, it the only concern would come in where the animals were uh, got. Uh, you've got two competing interests there where you've got uh, the interest of uh, an animal, uh, a thinking, feeling being who wants to continue living uh, versus somebody who either wants a decoration or some sort of ego boost. And those two things don't trump that animal's interest in his or her own life. Yeah, she, her and I are going to be doesn't almost going out on the trap. Not bad. That'll be alright. Not bad. Cowboys are really nice traps, though. I mean, they use snare traps, too, but the advantage of these is they don't tear themselves up so much, usually. Snare traps are nice, though, because it's a kill trap, and you come up on the dead animal, and it's already there, and dead. You don't have to worry about the dispatch or whatever of it. But even that, I do it. Oh, shit. I do it as humane as possible. I mean, I don't get any pleasure out of killing him or nothing like that. So that's it. Do I feel bad for this animal for a, you know, for a day while it sits out there until something eats it? And then, you know, and then be able to feed myself off of, you know, that animal dying and then, you know, trapping, you know, whatever it is that's coming, you know, that's coming to feed on it. And, and what else was I supposed to do? I was living out there, you know, for a roll. You know, I had nothing, you know, I had to live off the land. I mean, I wasn't eating the animals, but I was making my living off. It seems extreme to want to, you know, put somebody's livelihood, their, their livelihood, their job, their, their, uh, you know, anything that somebody gets pleasure out of, for what? Because you want to save a fucking chipmunk? It's a chipmunk. I mean, there's a thousand of them around here. You know, help yourself. We, we have, like I said, we have no requirements at all uh, for uh, a taxidermist to get a license. To get that changed, we need other taxidermists in the area to come together and give us information on what they'd like to see, schooling, being an apprentice, whatever they want it to be, they need to have that voice to us because we don't have time to sit there and work out the details of what other taxidermists believe are required or should be required. Um, taxidermy can be looked at like almost morbid, but because it's you're dealing with you know dead animals and stuff but it's like uh to me it's something completely else i don't know why it's a lot of fun to make an animal look the way it did um you know and it's someone's trophy and it's not just someone's trophy it's like they have so many memories on this hunt maybe with their kids their kids first buck or this happened on the hunter this happened on the hunter it reminds them so when they look at that animal like all these memories come flashing back to them so it's more than just a head on a wall plus that animal also fed their family and everything else. So everyone has their opinion and some people you won't be able to change so it's like I can show them what we're doing and, and explain why it's it's good and if they feel it's not that's that's fine you're entitled to your opinion. Um, I'm puttying from when the hide meets the horn there's a little bit of separation because the new growth is kind of cut away there so all I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting this like epoxy sculpt and filling in this little void and then I'll paint it so everything, you'll really never see it, but then it's all done up nice. We have had a goat named Festus, who was one of the first animals who came here, and he was picked up by animal control, and uh, they thought he only had a few months to live, he could barely walk and he just seemed very old and so they asked if we could take him for the last few months of his life and he has these big beautiful horns and w once he came here he just got a new lease on life once he had freedom and place to run and he he lived for another seven years and he, we definitely loved him and we spent a lot of time with him. He 
came out with us when you know we would be building fences with us and look at what we were doing and he was very curious and playful. Can you see her run from you? We knew he was going to die and, and he was euthanized. We had to bring a, a veterinarian out to have him euthanized. Those girls make you excited, huh? And Did you figure out that they're girls, did you? You know, for a second I thought it would be wonderful to either, at the minimum, just keep his horns because they're just so beautiful, taxidermy him, but in the end I would rather have the memories that we have of him and obviously we have video and photos of him seeing him as he lived and not as some sort of decoration in our house that, that would not seem respectful of his memory to me i love seeing taxidermy it's it like i said it preserves the animal in its essence is what it was let something just be put back into a dark corner of a shed or a pair of antlers nailed up or hung on the side of a barn or something. I don't think it really pays tribute to that animal that taxidermy really does pay tribute to. It shows it's the animal's beauty and what it used to look like when it was alive. Death. Sometimes it gets to me. Sometimes I don't know if I want to do this for the rest of my life or not, you know, because it kind of gets overwhelming to me. But, you know, I hate to say, I hate to say it because I always think it's a cop out when somebody does say this, but it's going to be done regardless. I do it or somebody else does it. So, you know, there might as well be some good mounts around always pushing for more. What else can we do? What else can we come up with? Ideas, um, techniques, um, just always, always, I will never, I don't know if I, I hope I never feel like I'm done. It's totally different and um, you know there's an old phrase, if you, if you love what you do you'll never work a day in your life. That's pretty much what we got going on here.